The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 23rd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in. We've got you covered. You can go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 138. The S&P's up basically a buck. Uh, NASDAQ is up 17. Russell's off five. The semis are up four. Traders are down 47. I call that a mixed bag out there. Gold's up about six bucks. Silver's up 20 cents. Lights we crude up a buck 78. Natural gas off four cents. to your treasury down nearly one point. Print out 119.27. Leading the clubhouse to the upside. It is TKO Group Holdings up $13 and change, nearly 18%. Shockwave Medical, 11 bucks or 5%. Monday.com on a Tuesday is up 5%, 11 bucks. Super Micro, about 8 or 2%. Gatix Corp is up 6.5%, $7 and change move. To the downside, it is Micro Strategy up 18 bucks, 3.8%. DBX ETF, no idea what that is. We'll skip it. DR Horton down about 14 bucks or 9%. Quanta Services. First time I recall seeing that name, down 13 bucks. That's off 6%. 3M is down 11. We're going to take a look at that for Duncan Steve uh, during the show today. And the Logitech International down about 10 bucks. That's about a 10% move to the downside. So let's begin, though, with the U.S. dollar index. It's trading up four, uh, 40 uh, points out, 40 ticks right now. If we take a look at the... Um, the market update chart that I use, I'll just simply expand this out. We can see the U.S. dollar index has had substantial resistance at its descending trend line. We can see that a new profile formed a couple of days ago. It formed below price. That is a bullish message. We have today's breakout above this descending price, uh, this descending trend line. That suggests that the U.S. dollar index should move up to 104.66. 104.66 is the bottom. That's the next uh, resistance level that I have. 104.66 is the bottom of that weekly profile. Now, there's no A to B equals CD pattern that is present. In order to do that, I have to use the exact same swing point, and I always hesitate to do that. If you were to generate that type of pattern, you'd be looking at using that January 5th swing point. That would be one that you could use. It would look like this. That's really not the way that the A to B equals CD pattern is uh, designed to work out there. But that would give us a one-to-one -one price projection of 104.13 uh, to 104.81 would be the 1.272. But we're not going to go with that. We don't need to go with that. We just need to know that price is breaking above resistance and heading on up towards that 104.66 level. So now let's go ahead and switch screens out here. Let's go actually take a look at the euro. That's about a, almost a 58% weighting inside the U.S. dollar index. It doesn't mean it's the only currency pair we need to keep track of, but it is the one that you and I are going to pay attention to right now. Right now, 
on a monthly basis, you can see that, well, you can't really see it that clearly, but what price has done, it continues to run into this little, what was a rising trend line, once broken, old support can become resistance. We can see that that is in fact what has happened out there. Now we're trading below the open of last month, not such a big deal, but if we do trade below last month's low, close below that, by the way, that level is at 1.0723. If we close below that at month's end, that tells us about a move back to that oscillator and change on, but if you close below that, that, then we're headed back to those lows in September. And that says the U.S. dollar index would just continue to move it on up. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we can see that price is now trading below that oscillator and change line. Because it's green, it just tells us about a further retracement. It doesn't get it off into full bearish mode out there. And on a daily time frame, this is the pattern that is really in play out, place out here. In play out here, that's the A to B equals CD pattern. And that A to B equals CD pattern does get us back to the December lows out there. The December low I'm referring to is is down at the 1.0723. So if this, in fact, comes to fruition out here, we'll see the U.S. dollar index continue to get stronger. Now, whether gold will uh, totally weaken, I mean, uh, until that correlation breaks, my assumption would be yes. Now, the only potential bottoming signal that I now see inside the euro charts would come from the 60-minute time frame chart, which is in a bar number eight. So bar number eight is going to complete at noon. Bar number nine must complete no matter what. Bar number nine just simply has to close below the close of bar number five. So for the euro, this is on a 60-minute time frame we're looking at. That would be at the 1.0863 level. It's mostly for Peter, who I know is tracking the uh, currencies and tracks the euro out there there. So you'd want to watch for that. Now, in other words, that says that you could get a TD nine count bottom for a 60 minute time frame between 12 noon and three this afternoon. And that would then or should lead then to a rally up towards resistance. Resistance right now would stand on a 30 minute time frame chart at 1.0864. That's the bottom of that 30 minute profile. So at this stage here, it looks like the euro wants lower price out there and that will put strength into that US dollar index out there. So we'll go ahead and we'll close out those charts. And uh, we'll go take a quick peek at uh, gold and silver and the GDX. Not a request. In fact, I only have about three requests so far. So I'd love more uh, from all of you Denners. Or if you're listening in live, uh, go ahead and send me an email. That's steve at tfnn.com. And uh, be happy to uh, take a look at whatever you're, you're interested in. So here are the gold charts, gold and silver, daily and weekly for gold. And on the silver, I've just got the daily and the GDX, the daily chart as well. So we take a look at gold's chart. It's got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Already blew through a swing point, uh, the B point of that. That was back on the 17th. So far, we've seen a rally right up to that oscillator and change line. That is acting as resistance. We are trading below the bottom of its profile. That's what makes me believe that uh, gold wants to make a move down towards 1979. What we're seen going on inside of the U.S. dollar index certainly adds to that idea. And I'm not saying that gold can't get below that level. I'm just saying that becomes the price target of the A to B equals CD and its next TD nine count breakout level. On a weekly time frame chart, we've got that sell the D point pattern. Price is below its green oscillator and change line. So it adds to the idea of a further retracement out there. Silver has a A to B equal. In fact, it's got two different A to B equal CD patterns out here. The large one and the small one pretty much end up at about the same price level level. But what we'll say out here is its price target is going to be that next TD nine count breakout area. And that's at about 2126. If that's the case out there, in fact, gold and silver do those things, then we're likely to see the GDX at least complete its A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, the B point on the GDX was the trading session of January 11th. And that did 22 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with 31 million shares. So the GDX has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside out there. There is a new profile that is forming today. So that support level that price now needs to get below is going to be at 2753, resistance up at 2813. But all this, all these patterns, these were drawn in before the U.S. dollar index decided that it was going to make that attempt to break out. It's still an attempt to break out. We won't know until the end of the day out here. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, 
get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Sorry about uh, running through that uh, breakout there. I was just so focused on what we were looking at. Wasn't paying attention. In any event, uh, let's uh, move on. We've, let's get to our first request out here. This coming in from Duncan Steve. Wants to take a look at 3M. 3M uh, just simply uh, moving substantially lower with volume uh, this morning. Now, what 3M did, Steve-O, as we can see on the trading day of uh, January 3rd, that confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It was a bearish sash candle. Now, we also had price that was trading with inside that bullish structured profile. And on the trading day of January 16th, you got a change in trend signal that was confirmed with two days below the bottom of that profile on January 17th. We then saw a counter trend move, which found resistance right up into where it should have found resistance, the top of that daily profile. And now today, boom, shellac to the downside. The question is, what is the short term direction out here? Well, first, watch 95 9512 95 is the daily TD9 count breakout level. A close below that is then going to signal a move back to 87.78. Now, I know that's not short term, but I wanted to give you the bigger picture because that might impact the short term signals that you see out there. So today, and tomorrow and the next day, the key level to be watching is going to be 95.12. If we get a daily close below that, that's going to signal lower price. And again, 87.78 would be the area that I would be looking at. With regard to an intraday type signal out here, let's pull over a 30-minute chart, see if there's any. We'll, we'll run through a few of them out here. And uh, no, the signal here would be to the downside. I don't see any kind of bottoming pattern on a 30-minute basis. How about an even shorter time frame? 15-minute chart. Oscillator and chain signs are going to be um, not accurate as I change the uh, time frames out here because it's set right now to a 30 minute. But on a 15 minute basis, we're talking ultra short term here. You are going to form bar number eight right now. So you could get a, a little bit of a uh, little relief type rally that would start uh, anywhere between 1130. That'd be bar number eight and 12 noon. Uh, let me take a look at. But, you know. And where could it rally to that I, that I don't know. I don't have any profiles or anything else out here to assist with that. Uh, lastly, I'll check the 65-minute time frame. That would be another time frame that I would use. And no bottoming signal 
there really to be paying attention to. So I, I don't know that I'd rely a whole lot. Um, if I were you, um, uh, Duncan, on that 15-minute uh, time frame chart, but you were asking about short term, so I wanted to make sure that I at least provided you with the information I think you were looking so for. So 3M looks like this thing is headed lower out there. I do hope that that helps you out. Let's go take a look at our next request. Next request coming in from Nicholas wants to take a look at URA. And the uh, question is, um, where is a buy point, basically? So he wanted to know about the weekly A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Um, so for that, and it's a gigantic one. Uh, so that gigantic one, if we take a look at it, I'll just simply draw it in here. What I'll probably do is I'll just draw in the A to B line, and I'll just simply move this over to the C point out there. So you're asking about that. We'll come back and take a look at it. Just make sure that that uh, B point was passed with volume out there. And the B point that we're looking at, again, well, that was a swing from September 29th out there, 19 million shares, and 19 million shares was passed with 11 million shares, but it was passed here with 23 million shares, and that was last week. And that confirmed an A to B equals CD with an initial price projection of about uh, $35, give or take. Now, that retracement there, that B to C retracement, Nicholas, much less than a, hopefully hopefully it's around 0.382 uh, retracement out there, uh, but it's much less than a 0.618, that is for sure. And so this should do more than a one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD to the upside. Your question is where to get in on this, All right? So you're trying to get in. So if I take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, let me just pull this back, see if there was a small A to B equals CD. I'm sure there is, I see A to B, C to, D. So you've got the uh, right. I think you had to wait for the day to play out here, at least, Nicholas, because price did close below the bottom of its daily profile. It uh, still hasn't closed the gap out there. But yesterday was an initial ch profile change in trend signal. Today, price is trying to get back up inside there. If we close back below profile levels, and that would be 29.96. So close back below 29.96 today, two days below, that is going to suggest lower price out there. Now, lower price to where? And that's a great question. I don't have that answer in looking at the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart says, well, maybe that's here, not 29.83. I don't know. The monthly chart uh, could go on to form a TD9 count top between this month and uh, March out there, so just simply to be aware of. So for your intraday signals, I'm saying we probably have to go down to a short-term time frame chart, Nicholas. So let's pull over the 30-minute chart. What does a 30-minute chart show us? The 30-minute chart shows a TD9 count and wave 7 bottom that formed out here with price – what looked like was going to go ahead and, can, and further its rally by taking out that breakdown uh, resistance level at 30.32. But we only saw one close above that. But I would say it would be something on a short-term time frame, like a 30-minute chart that you would be looking at to get into a, a long position out here. I don't really have that price point other than that. So you can watch this morning's low out there. I have price to get back and on a 30-minute basis, maybe test that swing point with lighter volume. That might be your entry into it. Uh, if we take a look at the URA, it has had two consecutive moves to the downside. So the question is, um, you know, will we get uh, two consecutive moves to the upside or more than that? So you do have that going for you. Uh, and typically, you can see here in this bullish move, you don't get more than four consecutive days to the downside out here. And more often than not, it's two or three days to the downside. So that's the only other piece of information I can provide to you that would say, well, maybe this morning was really the next bottom inside of URA out there. So, Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. I wish I could be more definitive. Um, I was as definitive as I can get. Sorry about that. Let's go to our next request out here. That's coming from Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. Mr. Bill just asked if we could go take a look at the correlation between the TLT and the S&P 500. And we're going to do that. But before we do that, since I'm on these white background charts here, let's go take a look at the TLT itself. What do we have inside the TLT? Um, I see what looks like it could be an A to B equals CD to the downside. But actually, I don't see that. Not enough of a retracement to get to really a C point out here. So we can say that the TLT is trading below profile support at 94.06 out there. And its next level of support on the daily time frame, Mr. Bill, is at 90.21. On a weekly time frame, the next level of support is at 9229 and on a monthly basis 9163 so we're going with 9021 to 9229 is the price objective for the TLT now let's go switch panel switch screens I should say give me a moment to do that and we'll take a look at our correlation tool out there and just see what that correlation looks like not that I'll necessarily be able to give you a whole a definitive understanding of it 
But here's what it looks like. And really, I think the question was, is there any kind of correlation, directly speaking, between the S&P 500 and the TLT? Now, this is set to, let me just make sure of this. I believe this is set to a three-day correlation. And I can change that live. So that's set to a three-day correlation. So, Mr. Bill, that's that's what I have for three days. I would say it's really a coin toss, and I would say a three-day correlation doesn't mean diddly with regard to helping us determine whether price is moving higher or lower. Now, this is a five-day, so basically it's a weekly correlation. And here, it's... Um, you know, it's a little bit more definitive, but not enough, I really think, to be um, at least my initial instinct to really be focused on that. And instead, I would say just focus on the patterns uh, at, like we took a look at with regard to the TLT. And that's suggesting that that wants further downside move. With regard to the TLT itself, if we look at, because I do on that market update, certainly we do take a look at. Uh, the 30-year uh, Treasury. And that is an A to B equal CD to the downside. 118 and about 27 is really where its price target is. The price is sitting at support right now, 119.23. So those projections inside the TLT, you need to see it close below 119.23. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. 
folks. All U.S. indices trading in the uh, red as we speak. You've got the Dow down 188, S&P's off 5, NASDAQ 100 down 17, Russell is off 10 points. Let's go to our next request out here. This is coming in from Mr. Bill. Wants to take a look at the construction ETF that is called NAIL. We're going to change screens here. We'll get to our white background screens uh, momentarily, and we'll see that NAIL right now is confirming a roads momentum indicator top. And if price closed below 101.62 today, Mr. Bill, that'll generate a profile change in trend signal. Where would be the next level of support? Well, the next level of support that I see out here inside of NAIL, Mr. Bill, is its weekly oscillator and change line. That's around 98.40. I say around because that price is going to move up and down by pennies or so as price moves. Now, what we can see out here is what? I don't see really any kind of a top. Well, hold on a minute. Maybe there's a large A to B equals CD. Yeah, there was, but I don't think it made that. Let me take a quick peek here. Let's draw in that A to B line, and then we'll just simply go ahead and move that over to the C point. And we'll see if I was correct or not. All right, I was incorrect. There we go. So now what you've got out here on a weekly time frame is a sell the D point pattern uh, that is likely going to form. It's only Tuesday. It needs that bearish reversal candle. We've got that as we speak right now. We also have a key reversal bar. So that's why I believe it's likely to form that um, uh, uh, sell the D point. But what Nail needs to do, Mr. Bill, in order to suggest any downside traction, is price going to have to close below that green oscillator and change on at 98.33. So 90, 98 and change out there is really the key level to be watching and observing here. And if price gets below that, then we could be looking at a move between 74.80 to 80.56. 74.80 on a weekly basis where a counter trend move would run into support. And on that monthly time frame, 70.50 is the support level. So with regard to that construction ETF, NAIL, you're getting that confirmed top today. You're getting a confirmed change in trend from a profile standpoint, it appears, and 98.33 or thereabouts going to be the key level for you to continue to watch. Nitram inside the Tiger's Den wants to get a cup of Joe. So let's go take a look at Starbucks out here and see what it's doing. It's just consolidating with inside its uh, profile levels. We can see how the sellers at the, this is where it gives you and I a competitive advantage, doesn't it? We know where the sellers are located. We can look at the charts to say just how reliable. Um, these uh, profile levels are, and they're very reliable. 93.94 was where the sellers were located. The last two days, price tried to take them out. You know, Tom likes to say, if you can't bust them up, you try to bust them to the downside. So bust them to the downside. The first level would be 92.44, maybe 92.42 to 92.44. That's a daily oscillator and change line. You get below that, and because it's red, you'll get all the way back to support, being meaning the bottom of its profile at 91.72 out there. On a weekly basis, Starbucks, if it closes below uh, the price level of, this is that weekend, 96.01. The price close below 96.01. This will confirm a TD9 count bottom. Now, that pattern will complete next week. In order for this to get some traction, price is going to need to take out that oscillator and change line. That would become your resistance level. That's up at 95.04. And the monthly time frame, all I have is a consolidation with inside its profile with that oscillator and change line acting as resistance for basically the last uh, seven or eight months out there. So that becomes a real key level on any kind of a rally. So Starbucks right now, consolidation on the daily, TD9 count potential on the uh, weekly uh, time frame chart out there. And that's what I see, Nitram. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to Starbucks. McGuppy wanted to take a look at ticker symbol LAES. So let's get those uh, charts up on our screen out here. Let me uh, get my other screens going as well. Yes. Okay. So with regard to Ellie, the question was, where do we see a buy point out here? And uh, that's so weird. There we go. Okay. Wasn't being able to pull it up on my other system. So right now, it's sitting basically uh, at or near support. And support being the bottom of that profile, McGuppy, and that's at a buck uh, forty-seven. We're trading right now at a buck fifty-three out there. So on a daily basis, I don't have a topping pattern per se. Yeah, no, I don't have any kind of topping pattern. So from a support standpoint, and you're asking for a buy point, you're basically at it. Let's go look at a thirty-minute time frame chart. See if we see any signals here to support that idea. So we start with the 30-minute time frame chart. You do have or should have, let me just update this, you've got a confirmed TD9 count bottom. So here's your battlegrounds right now. They're going to be profile levels, a buck 60. A buck 60, a buck 51 is support, 
which it's held, and a buck sixty is resistance. Above a buck one sixty is going to be a buck, uh, oh, a buck one eighty three. And it close above one eighty three, you'll have a, a change, TD nine count change in trend signal out there. So the thirty minute chart is supported. What we just looked at with regard to the daily time frame. Let's throw in a couple more out here. Uh, let's put in a sixty five minute chart. See if there's any kind of signal there. The answer is there is not. So if you get a failure on that 30 minute chart, then a buck 31 opens itself up as a potential buy area for you. So that's what I see when we take a look at LAES McGuppy. I hope that that helped you out. If not, right back, let me know. We'll try to get you that information you're looking for. Joe wanted to take a look at natural gas. And his question, probably like many out there, is where is the bottom? So let's pull up natural gas. Just take a look at these three time frame charts out here. So we're dealing with the March contract. Let's go ahead and open up the daily time frame. The March contract, as we can see, is testing a swing point that was also a TD9 count and wave number seven bottom. And that's a swing point out here, Joe, that uh, uh, took place on December the 11th. Now that low, which is at uh, 2.107, so far was tested this morning. We got down, I believe it was, let me make sure of that. We got down to a low of 2.107. 079. So now you've got a test and rejection so far of that swing swing point. Of course, price must close above that swing point low today in order for it to be a rejection out there. Again, 2.107. Now I don't have volume out here uh, that's going to assist us. There was 150,000 contracts back on that uh, swing point day in December. Um, volume wise today, it says 70,000. I don't know if I'll trust, trust that or not out here. Uh, so just like we did on that one with McGuppy. We went to some intraday charts to look to see if there was any kind of bottom signal. Well, first, let's look at what's going on in the weekly and the monthly time frame. And the weekly time frame chart has negated its wave number seven bottom. That was letter G. And it negated it with one tick below it, which we did today. So we saw that out there. Price is below the bottom of its weekly profile. It has triggered a rose momentum indicator signal. That requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. Since what you are probably looking at, Joe, is not just a like a tradable uh, bottom, you know, getting in and out. You're looking maybe for a longer term bottom out there. This would suggest that we would wait because this would be much longer term. This would suggest that we wait for a bullish reversal can on the weekly time frame to enter a long trade. Why might natural gas continue to move lower out here? And that's a great question. I thought I had pulled this up. Apparently, I didn't. But let's try that again. Let's see if we can get natural gas. This is the, where the heck did it go? Here we go. This is the seasonal patterns for natural gas. I don't know why. It's taking the time it is. There we go. So now we take a look at natural gas. Let's put in where we're at today. So here, this would show us that typically we would get a little bit of a rally into about the end of uh, January. We're certainly not getting a rally into the end of January. And then this shows that natural gas, seasonally speaking, well, that's 10 years. Let's get the full length out here, which is a 33-year time period. The 33-year time period shows that we typically don't get that bottom until February out there. You can see out here, seasonally speaking, it's March and April that are the two most favorable seasonal months over the 33-year period for natural gas. So, Joe, I hope that helps you out. You might have a bottom today, but the weekly and monthly charts are saying you might want to wait. Steve Roach with TFNN. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Today is a coffee day. Uh, we looked at Starbucks just uh, during that last uh, segment, and uh, right now we're going to go take a look at coffee. This is for Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den. And, uh, John, uh, my apology, uh, what I will do once the show ends and I close out a number of the charts is uh, in order for me to get my multi-time frame uh, panel for coffee, uh, I need to use a, a different data feed. And I've got too many charts open to be able to pull that switcheroo. We can take a look at it because this is a data feed that I use for coffee, which is coming from eSignal out here. So this is the data feed, and that will give me all the data to look at the multi time frame chart. So I will generate that, and I'll post that inside the Tiger's Den for you. But we can still use these charts here to assist you. Uh, with what coffee is doing. So right now I show coffee trading in between. You can see the wedge pattern in between descending trend line uh, resistance and, and rising uh, price channel support out there. <clears throat> so it's just about or really it has. So price is trading above the top of its profile. Or nearly, we would say that that is bullish. Why? Because it is bullish. But we can also see that price is really running right up into that resistance level. It's at about 194.50 or so, but we're close enough for that. The actual high today has been 193.95 out there. Maybe it has a little bit more room to run. In fact, maybe it's going to run up to 196.17. And 196.17 is the top of the weekly profile out there so what coffee is doing as good as it looks right now it's dealing with resistance no idea whether it can take that resistance level out or not monthly chart says yet yeah, should be able to because price is above the top of its profiles out there but it's going to be that's so that's what we're looking at as i mentioned i will go ahead and uh, post the intraday charts into the tiger's den for you and that way you'll have multiple time frames ideally what we'd be looking at here is as price approaches resistance we want to see if that's being confirmed on intraday charts showing topping signals td9 count sell the d point pattern roads momentum indicator something along those maybe wave number seven those would be the four primary tools that we would use to identify a top or a bottom so uh i hope that that provided you uh some information and again i'll provide you all that information after the uh, show so let's move on to our next request out here this is coming in from coda inside the tiger's den for that we're going to go ahead and switch screens get back to those white panels and we're going to take a look at tesla out there coda i apologize i didn't write down what it was you were looking for in tesla so i'll just give you the full review and the full review goes like this you got tesla trading below profile support and a red oscillator and change line those are bearish conditions they suggest lower price today looks like it will become bar number eight but it's not a low 
of the of the pattern out there. You would need to see a tick in the case of Tesla. You would, oh, there's a new profile. In fact, it has formed out here. So it's a bullish structure profile with support being between 208.74 and 213.67, resistance up at 221.07. Now, just because it formed a bullish profile, does that mean that it won't go on to do or generate this um, a TD9 count? I don't know the answer to that question. What I do know is that if a TD9 count pattern is going to form, that we need to see within the next couple of days, that could be today, tomorrow, or the following day, a tick just needs to be a tick below 206.27. Now, today needs to close below the close of bar number five. So you can negate the signal altogether if, in fact, Tesla were to close above 211.88. And we're at, but so I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But uh, that's what you would be watching for. And then tomorrow would be much easier. Price would just simply need to – oh, I, t I take that back. Today's close needs to be a close below 215.55. Tomorrow's close would need to be a close below 208.74 out there. Uh, 211.86. Jeez, Stevie, get it right out there. It would need to be a close below 208.74. So if I haven't confused you, if you allow me, I'll take another 30 seconds and really confuse the heck out of you. No, I'm kidding. I figure you, you might have caught that. On a weekly time frame, we don't see any kind of a bottom signal. All that we see out here, Coda, is price trading into a swing point. That's a swing point from November 3rd. That had volume of 621 million shares so far in just the first day and a half worth of trading out here. We've done a total of 175 million. So 175, again, going to that 625. Yesterday's volume on this, just uh, we can multiply that times five. 117. Wow. So that's a pretty decent volume, but still not enough to bust out that swing low from the trading week of November the 3rd. But you're trading into it. Uh, lower prices likely. I don't have a bottoming signal out here. Uh, the only bottoming signal could come from a close above 221.07. That would be your profile change in trend signal. So, Coda, I hope that helped you out with regard to uh, Tesla. And uh, you are only that I've got wave number, what, C to the downside? Yeah, just uh, wave C to the downside. So that would kind of suggest that this is uh, further to go as well. Let's go take a look at Eli Lilly. This is for Electric Light Orchestra inside the Tiger's Den. If we take a look at Eli Lilly, it's just consolidating with inside its daily profile out here. Now, with regard to topping patterns, unless there's an A to B equals CD that was present, I don't have one. But let's pull the chart back and see if there was. Yeah, most certainly there was an A to B equals CD pattern. So this does have a confirmed sell the D point with a consolidation with inside that daily profile. Again, that's between 613.40 and resistance is in the 632.47 to 640.10 level out there. Um, what else do we have? On a weekly basis, that confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. We did close below its oscillator and change line. We're trading below that as well. That being 634.62, that suggests lower prices likely. Well, the lower prices likely thing ain't going to happen until you see a close below 613.40. Of course, we're at 626, but I'm referring to the more significant lower move out there. And that significant lower move, if you did get a close below 613, would take you down to this 586 level out there. Turns out that on a monthly basis, Eli Lilly is uh, going to go ahead and complete both a, well, it's going to complete a uh, TD9 count top. It is in wave number seven to the top side, but as you know, uh, this needs a lower high in order to confirm that pattern. But the TD9 count, that's not going to need anything. That's going to complete this month no matter what. So Eli Lilly is not really looking the greatest out here other than the fact that profile support held. You would expect it to, but watch that 613 area ELO. So at this stage here, if you're looking to enter, take a buy uh, on this, I, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't see it right now, based upon the signals coming from the weekly and monthly. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you understood what I was saying out there. That doesn't mean I'm right. It just means that's what how I'm interpreting the charts at this moment in time. Now, was that a good bottom um, this morning out there at that low? Good bottom. Well, let's just take a look at what went on on the intraday charts out here. And on the intraday charts, price was pulling back and testing a breakout level of support at 617.84 out there. On a further rally, 632.69 would be your resistance level to be watching there. And that's on the intraday time period. So that's what uh, Stevie sees on when we look at the charts there for Eli Lilly. Coda is back with us. He wants to take a look at Snowflake out there. SNOW is a ticker symbol. So let's go see what its charts are communicating to you and I. And on a a daily time frame. What do we have out here? 
pretty much a good old-fashioned sideways consolidation, Stevie would say. Let's open up this chart out here. Now, price is trying to take out at least the top of that consolidation. And that would require a close above the December 14th high, and that's at the 202.83 level. It's about 8 million shares traded uh, that day. Today, so far, we're at 4 million shares. Price is pushing into that with volume. So a close above that level, that's the high of December 14th, 202.83, that's going to get this thing into a bullish mode and not a consolidation. That consolidation, you can see that sideways move. Well, maybe you can't see it. I'll just simply draw it in so that we can all see it out there. And that's just using Stevie's rectangle tool. You do that, and there's basically your consolidation. Now, the cool thing about that is when you break through consolidation, you've got a measured move. So the measured move could be for Snowflake up to about the 223 level. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Let's uh, finish taking a look at uh, Snowflake out here. I realize that there's also a weekly consolidation pattern out there that gives you an even bigger. Uh, price objective of around the 295 level. Now, what you want to be paying attention to your code is the top of the weekly profile. This is a profile formed a couple of weeks ago. is at 202.83. So Friday, in order to confirm this potential breakout, you'd like to see it close above that. And then if we take a look at that uh, monthly time frame chart, you also have resistance. That's at the bottom of its monthly profile. And that is currently printed out at the 206.74 level. So those are the areas to be watching with regard to Snowflake. Let's move on to our next request. This is coming in from uh, ELO, 
Uh, Jeff Lynn is back with us. He's singing uh, Don't Bring Me Down as we take a look at the stock charts here for rum. This is at two gigantic days out here. Right now, what price is doing is taking on weekly resistance. That's the top of its weekly profile at 614. ELO, you get a close above 614. This says it wants to make a move up to the 859 level out there. Wow, what does rum do? Rum is certainly running. That is for sure. Let me open up this daily time frame chart, see if there's anything else. 793 is the next upside price target for run on the daily time frame that is its td nine count breakdown level so hope that helps you out and uh, thanks so much for your request today the last request coming in from dan inside the tiger's den wants to take a look at vfc when we take a look at vfc what do we have out here we've got price that is trading above its daily oscillator and change line it closed above the top of its daily profile for two cons three now consecutive sessions out here this has a change in trend signal profile change in trend signal where's the next level of resistance stevie would have to say it's between 1801 and 1935 that's its bearish structured weekly profile and on a monthly time frame your next level of resistance this is the level where counter trend rallies end on VFC and that's at $20.27 that is the center of that bullish structured profile out there so that's the real key level to be watching longer term Dan hope that helps you out Denners thank you so much for all those requests out there as well as everybody who wrote in by email I want everybody to have a terrific Tuesday be safe out there we'll look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday take care folks